My name is Dr. Anne Chauvet. I'm a veterinarian, a diplomat in the American College of Veterinary Internal Medicine in the specialty of neurology. We're a full emergency 24-7 facility that also offers specialty services, obviously in neurology and as well in surgery, cardiology, internal medicine, ophthalmology, and many more. At Critical Care and Veterinary Specialists, we always aim to provide the best, and this is why we chose hyperbaric veterinary medicine. In our field, many companies are trying to break through. Companies from the human side are trying to infiltrate into the veterinary field. It's a very prosperous market. Unfortunately, much of the equipment and of the products that they sell are refurbished, used, recycled. With that, of course, comes the possibilities of error and, of course, of damage. Hyperbaric medicine is actually an amazing therapy. What it does is push oxygen in the body and it brings oxygen in places of our body that the red cells, who normally carry oxygen, cannot get to. So it is sort of super oxygenating the body. With that, you have healing powers that are amazing. The white blood cells are sort of potentiated or super powered by this oxygen. You have areas where you can have strokes, for example, or cardiopulmonary arrest, and with this oxygen coming through, you have an amazing fast recovery. We think about animals or people who've had skin grafts, and that needs to heal very fast. This is where oxygenation comes into play and helps vessels grow faster and the tissue to heal faster. You think about the situations where you have toxicities, monoxide toxicities. By pushing the oxygen in, you're pushing out the monoxide and helping recuperation at a tremendously fast level. Hyperbaric oxygen therapy is actually very safe. It is a frequent concern from the clients and referring vets because it is liquid oxygen and we are putting it under pressure in this big chamber. However, following all the protocols and of course the adequate and proper full training, there's absolutely minimal risk for any complications. Hindsight 2020, when we look at the things that we buy for our clinic, equipment that we acquire, and treatments that we offer to the client, you have to sit back and say, was this worth it? Is this the right thing to do? Is it worth it? Is it worth the value to the client? And I can hands down tell you hyperbaric chamber therapy is worth it. Absolutely. I think any specialty hospital, particularly any facility that deals with emergencies and deals with surgeries, should be equipped with such a chamber. Amongst the multitude of patients that we've gotten here at Critical Care and Veterinary Specialists, I can recall a very first case, which was an amazing little dog named Lucy. She came from the referring vet after having a cardiopulmonary arrest during a dental, during anesthesia, which is unfortunately not that uncommon. The vet performed CPR, recuperated the dog, and made the appropriate decision to send it right away to our clinic. We processed Lucy, literally, because she was not aware, pretty comatose, into the hyperbaric chamber rapidly. And we followed with about four treatments the first day. Then we backed it down over the next few days and went for about two weeks of therapy. Lucy was walking within 36 hours or less. She was back to normal within a couple of weeks. So pretty extraordinary considering she came to us pretty much comatose, unresponsive, unaware of her environment, and just recuperating from the CPR. One of the great advantages of the hyperbaric oxygen therapy is that it helps also provide access to areas that would not normally get access to in a normal dog that's healing from an infection. For example, we have a dog named Sue that had discospondylitis, an infection of the disc space between the two vertebrae. This was going on for months and months and it was actually brucella, which is very much a bad disease. When we took Sue off her antibiotics, she relapsed and began to be painful and weak again. In order to help her heal faster, we thought we'd use the oxygen therapy in order to push oxygen through, promote vascularity, promote healing from the neutrophils and the activity of the neutrophils while she was on a new protocol of her doxycycline. So we put Sue through about, I think, about 10 or 20 treatments of hyperbaric chamber. And as of now, Sue is well over six weeks off her antibiotics with no relapse. So pretty amazing.
One of the things that can happen to our dogs is they can get injuries and they can get sort of scuffing of the skin during the injury. Sometimes you have to remove a mass of their body and you have to reconstruct the skin so you don't have an open gaping hole. And that's called skin flaps or reconstructive flap surgery. Unfortunately, these skin flaps can often fail if there's not enough oxygen, not enough vascularity, and it's not uncommon that these flaps can fail and therefore create much worse serious complication. Here, what we've done is we've combined all our surgeries to go pretty much through the hyperbaric chamber, particularly all the flap surgeries. So we have a dog named Larry that had a completely scuffed top of the head from having a car run over his head. And he was very lucky because his damage was mostly skin and muscle trauma. We went ahead and did all the preliminary care and then flapped his injury to go ahead and cover all his bone of his skull and Larry healed beautifully with absolutely no complications subsequent to going to hyperbaric chamber therapy because of the oxygen therapy promoting the healing, the cleanup neutrophils, and making things a lot easier for the surgeon to work with. Same thing happened with another dog named Ninja that had a mass removed at the base of the tail and a fairly large skin flap had to be done in order to reconstruct this area. Ninja has gone to a hyperbaric chamber therapy on a daily basis in order to help him heal rapidly and he went home within only about three days of treatment and continues to get his chamber therapy.